Hi everyone, today we're gonna to do a follow-up to one of the most requested topics that you all have asked me for, and that is pattern layouts. Today we're gonna to do a scallop layout, so you can build a pattern from scratch with me from sketch to finished pattern. I'm gonna take you through my whole process from the original scallop layout to a finished pattern with color versions, so you can see the whole process from start to finish. I'm Liz Kohler Brown. I'm a surface designer and hand letterer who loves helping artists and designers make artwork on their iPad that is sellable and professional. So let's jump right into making a scallop layout repeat pattern. So I'm starting out here in Procreate at 3000 by 3000 pixels. You can work at any size here. I like to work at that size and then I vectorize my patterns later. So for me, the size isn't as important, but if you're gonna do the whole pattern in Procreate, of course you need to pick the size that is best for whatever use you're gonna be using it for. I'm going with my Everything Bagel brush set, which you can get for free right below this video, and I've got my sketching pencil. So I'm gonna start out by just drawing a big circle on the canvas and tapping one finger down to get that perfect circle go as far to the edge as we can, and then tap the move tool and I'm gonna turn on snapping and really snap that right to the corners until you get those little yellow bars that are like, yes, you are snapping to the very edge. So that is the top part of my scallop. So what I can do now is turn on the drawing guide, edit drawing guide and go to 2D grid turn that size all the way up, and that just shows me where I can cut my scallop. So I'll tap done. And what you can do is just grab that freehand selection tool, cut all that, drag three fingers down and cut. Or you could just erase, obviously, <laughs> that's just as easy. You could grab the eraser, come through and just clean this up, going straight to that line making sure you've got this nice little scallop shape. Now we can duplicate that shape, tap the move tool and move it down using that snapping again. See how the snapping is glowing gold when I do that? Same process, duplicate the top of your shell shape or scallop shape, get those gold bars to pop up and then you've got your scallop. So imagine if you were using a vertical canvas, like a tall, skinny canvas, you would do the exact same process. This just happens to be a square repeat. Now that I've got my shape, let's turn down the opacity on that so it's not quite as easy to see and it's not distracting. And I'm gonna be working in symmetry. I'll tap Edit Drawing Guide, Symmetry, turn on Vertical Symmetry. You don't have to work in symmetry. Um, I usually don't. If I have more time on my hands, I don't. But for this, I just want to give you all a quick overview. So I'm going to be working in symmetry. I'm going to start by figuring out what's going to go in this shell. So it might be some florals. It might be some illustration elements. You can play here and put, obviously, whatever you want. I'm looking at this Art Nouveau book over here and just kind of getting some inspiration from there, but I don't like to copy, even if it's in the Creative Commons, I don't like to copy something exactly. So I'm kind of just getting some inspiration from there, but not everything. One thing I really like to do is go outside of my scallop just a smidge. It doesn't have to be a lot, but just a little bit to give it a little more visual interest. So I'm borrowing some leaf shape ideas from this Art Nouveau book over here. I'll link this right below this video. So if you all want to check out this book, you can too, but you can also just go to Flickr Commons and type, you know, Art Nouveau inspiration if you like this style. 
So we've got some leaves in there. We could do two different leaf types. We could do some overlapping, whatever you want to do here. But basically what we're trying to do is fill this shape. And I am going to go outside the shape a little. I want to create this puzzle effect between my top, let's call it the first scallop and the second scallop. So this is my first scallop and then we're going to create a second scallop. So we're going a little bit outside of the bounds just to create that fun looseness. So once you feel good about your first scallop, you can create a new layer, get pure white as your color and tap fill. So you just have a pure white layer. Drag that below everything else and then highlight all those and group them. So we've got this nice little group that is, let's just call this one. Just keep it simple. This is your first scallop, okay? So now that we have that first scallop, we need to make space for the second scallop. So let's duplicate it. I'm even going to lock my first one so I don't get confused and duplicate that four times. So now I can tap the move tool, making sure that edit drawing guide 2D grid is on. Tapping the move tool and pop this scallop here. You can make that first one invisible for now so that your snapping tool doesn't get confused. And just popping that in the corner, you might need to zoom in to make sure you get it right into the perfect spot. And each of these is going in their little corner. So now we have a new scallop. I'm just gonna merge those four. I don't you know, need to save those layers. I don't care about preserving that new color, new layer, just so it's easy to see. Now I get to fill this shape, avoiding these little areas where I peeked out. So same kind of idea. Let's turn on our symmetry first, edit drawing guide, symmetry, vertical. And yeah, something similar, but not exactly what we did before. Something a little unusual compared to that first version. If you do the same thing every layer, it gets a little boring for the user. You might even include something like a butterfly or dragonfly or something to just break up that space so we don't have the same thing going on in two spots. I'm even gonna let this one peek in. So I have seen some people build repeat patterns before where they go ahead and ink, like they might ink that first shell. I never ink anything until I have done a full once over on both of these shells because you know, you might change your mind. I'm deciding now I want this leaf to peek out of the shell. So I'm gonna have to delete some of those pieces from here. So it's like the first pass is just to get something down on the page and then you start refining so that's why it's a good idea I think to not ink at this stage at this stage we're just putting down shapes circles lines and I'm going to get a new color to kind of show you what I want to do with this previous layer so the first shell look at this dead space could we have this little guy turning on drawing assist. So I've got symmetry. Could we have this little guy come down here and then just peek right there. That's where it will end up showing up. So I'm thinking about both layers, both shells as I'm drawing each of them. So none of these shells are working separately. They have to work together. So that's why I'm campaigning for not inking until you are completely sure about your sketch. So continue this process and we will meet up in the inking stage. So I'm pretty happy with this, but I do want to do one check before I start inking. So I'm going to go to share JPEG, save image, 
add, insert a photo, and insert that image. So just the same image we were just looking at. Get a canvas, edit drawing guide, and turn on your 2D grid. Tap done. Then we can resize that JPEG, that inserted image that we just popped on the canvas. And just make that repeat here, duplicating that, putting it in place. And then we're just gonna scan around and say, what looks weird? This looks weird. What is this area here? This is a big, weird kind of blank. And this looks a little weird. It's like this sliver that I created. So these are issues that we need to address. So how can we address that issue? Well, that is why we save these original pieces. So that issue is right here and right here. So could we get a different color on the layer that that goes with? and put something here. It could either come from the first layer. Let's make sure our drawing guide is on symmetry, vertical. Could come over here from this little stem like that. That would be an okay filler, I think. We could also just bump up the size of this or move it up a little bit. So I'm just trying to get rid of that awkward space. So you'll take some time to do that and make sure you don't have any awkward spaces before you start inking. You don't wanna get into the inking process and then realize, oh, now I have all this stuff to fix because that's when it's hard to fix issues. You wanna fix these issues when it's still easy. So I'm pretty happy with how this all looks. I'm going to group my second shell and let's rename that two. Now we've got one and two and I can lock those or I can leave them as they are. I could even duplicate them both. Sometimes I'll do that just to have an extra version and merge everything and reduce the opacity. So if you just want to like save all your previous sketch layers and work with just basically like a scrap sheet that's duplicated, sometimes that's nice to just kind of understand like what do I still have? Can I go back to my sketch if I need to? Sometimes it's nice to be able to do that. Now I'm on a new layer above my little scrap sketch and I've got the drawing assist on, so we're still got our symmetry on. Using this brush from the Everything Bagel, which is called Rough Inking. And now I'm gonna go through and do some rough inking. And when I say rough, I mean like rough and loose, you guys. I'm, I'm working on it. I'm not very good at doing stuff in a loose way, so that's one of my challenges that I am working on right now. So one way I do that is by working quickly when I can. Another way to do that is to just use looser shapes and you know let your hand be a little bit loose on the canvas. You don't have to do things so quickly. You don't have to fill everything in. Like what if I just leave some of those rough spots? That can be really fun. So I'm gonna do this whole process, inking my first shell and then inking my second shell. And then we're gonna be ready to do color, y'all. So meet you back when we're done with this inking of the first shell. So there is our first shell. So that's gonna be the image that I'm gonna use later on. But for now, I can just group this with the sketch, duplicate it, and merge those together. So that is like my original 
down here. This is my original that I'm going to be using. And this is again like just a scrap sheet where I've merged the sketch and the inking. This just helps me see what I did on my previous layers. Duplicating that three times so I have four total and making sure the 2D grid is on. And again, popping these into the corners. We do this process a lot when we build repeats, duplicating what we're working on, popping it into the four corners, and then we have that nice blank space in the middle to ink. So now I can repeat that exact same inking process on this inner shell. Just making sure that drawing assist is on. So now this round of inking, I have something to reference. I'm looking at these previous layers that I've created and just making sure things are fitting like a puzzle. That's all patterns are, is puzzles with pretty images in them. So I'm just keeping an eye on my puzzle pieces and making sure that they fit together nicely. So here we are with the two parts of my pattern. This is the first part and then make that invisible and that's the second part. So I've got two pieces and this is the portion where I vectorize my pattern. So this is a process, I do this in my classes where I show how to make patterns in vector format. So if you wanna do that whole process, I'm gonna put a link right below this video that will help you do that. If you wanna finish this in Procreate, if you're a Procreate person, do it that way. But we will pick this up in Affinity Designer where I like to finish my patterns. So if you wanna do the vectorization process or this one, we'll meet there to finish up with color. So here we are in Affinity Designer. And again, you don't have to do this if you're not vectorizing your patterns, but there is a link below to understand more about why and how to vectorize if that's something that you wanna do. It's a little bit lengthy for this short iPad art break though. So working in Procreate if that's what you like or working in Affinity if you're more into that, you can start adding color. And I like to go from the ground up. I like to start with my background. So I'm gonna go with a gold background. Then on these leaves, I could do like a green or I could do this, ooh, I like that mustard. I've put these stems in a separate color. So what if the stems were just an unusual bright color? And then I've got my flowers last. So I've grouped my vectors so that I can easily just play with color here. So if you do work with vectors, I definitely recommend doing that so that it's really easy for you to just come through and like, okay, I want this to be darker, I want this to be lighter. I wanna group all of my leaves or maybe you wanna put some leaves in different categories. I also sometimes like to look at this view rather than looking at this view so that it's a lot easier to see the big overall look. I've kind of had some indecision. Should I make all of these stems dark or should I keep some of them light? So I'm kind of going half and half at this point so I can really see from a bird's eye view what that's gonna look like. I think I'm gonna end up going with the darker stems, but essentially this just gives you a chance, especially with this bigger preview, gives you a chance to see what it would look like in a big version. And then you can really play with background colors, flower colors, and create a bunch of different color versions. So here are some color versions I came up with and I'm loving all of these. I can see them working well for a lot of different uses. I hope you can see how that scallop pattern really gives this a beautiful flow and helped me just dive right into building a pattern rather than worrying about where to place elements or if the pattern was going to flow well. Question time. This question is from Callie Rally. Can you tell us if only Affinity Designer is needed for surface pattern design? I see the bundle option as well. 
I know what you mean, Callie. I think a lot of people are confused by this. Affinity offers a lot of different apps like Affinity Photo, Affinity Publisher, and you're wondering if you need those to make patterns. Personally, I only use Affinity Designer. That is the only program that works well for my process, working in vector format, and that's the process I showed in this class. So if you wanna do that same process I'm doing, all you need is Affinity Designer. I've never used Affinity Photo or Publisher. I'm sure they work well, but personally, I've never used them. I do know some people who use them and like them, so you might wanna try them out if you wanna go ahead and grab that bundle. But for me, Affinity Designer is enough. Remember, if you click subscribe, you can get these iPad art breaks in your notifications so you never miss a new project with me. I love sharing these short, quick and easy projects with you all. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.